good lad. Good lad. Morning everyone. So what I'm going to work on this morning is making a plinth or some housing for the fridge and hopefully Max is going to help me. Yes. So I'm going to do a quick rough plan. It's the space between where the kitchen ends and the back of the passenger seat. So it is a, a narrow space, but there's more than enough for the fridge. Okay. So what I want to make basically is um, a shelf. I think with about six legs. Um, it can't be any more than 30 centimetres high because then when I add the height of the fridge on there that's uh, going to bring it to the top of the passenger seat because the passenger seat is on an incline. So what I also want to do is I want to have a side on it as well between the end of the plinth and the back of the passenger seat so it'll go like that then there'll be a leg and a leg and a leg and a leg and then probably just something in the middle just to make sure it's stable um, <clears throat> then I'm because because the fridge has got four little uh, legs four little feet should I say I want to um, gouge out four little places where the feet go but I don't think that's going to keep it in place sufficiently when we're driving along so what I've ordered is some webbing and some velcro and so I'll cut out a small gap on either side then the webbing will go underneath this top shelf up both of the sides and then over the top of the fridge where the velcro will hold it and the top of the fridge won't then be seen because that will be underneath the countertop so that's what I've got to make today this is my plan then I do know the rough measurements of the fridge just going to check everything out in the van where the fridge is and then get putting this information onto some wood this is the fridge that we've gone with it's a Dometic fridge I can't remember how many litres it has at the minute but it was the slightly bigger one I've just unpacked it and you know what to see you pay so much for these Dometic fridges they're pretty rough and ready but they're supposed to be the best and they're supposed to work even when they're getting jiggled along so okay so we've seen the plan that I need for the plinth I'll just show you we're going to go in here and so I'm just going to quickly measure the fridge to make sure I have got a full recollection of all the measurements make sure I get my plinth wide enough and deep enough and then we'll get marking it onto our piece of wood and get it cut out this is the piece of wood I've chosen it was an off cut left over from the um, tops of the seats so it's a 12 mil ply so that should be strong enough and I've marked out where I need to cut so that will be the actual plinth itself then this section over here which you can't see because of the light there we go lovely bright sunshine today but it's freezing cold no you can't quite see that but anyway this section here is going to be the side because what I want to do is have some storage underneath 
this long pole here is square um, so it's what I'm going to use for the legs I've just done some quick markings on it just to make sure that there was sufficient to get six legs out but I know I'll have to measure each leg as I go along and cut it where the feet sit and then I want to make sort of an indent into that so the feet will sit inside the indent. Much harder than I thought because the clearance is very short. That one I've missed completely. Bit of a mark, bit of a mark, bit of a mark. So let's try measuring them.
broke my glasses the other night and I spent all day yesterday trying to get them fixed. Ended up with the opticians to say that they can't fix them so I had to buy a new pair of glasses but they won't be ready until next week. So now I'm struggling with glasses that keep falling off. More difficult than I thought but I think I've figured it now. So I've marked where the circles are then to make sure that they're all equal I've measured um, I've measured up and I've measured in so that each one is sort of equal in the right place with a dot in the middle some of them took more attempts than others nope it's gonna blow away Morning everyone. So yesterday I tried to cut freehand with the square wood. Let me grab that for you. This one. Um, but as you all know I can't saw and none of my tops were straight even though I tried to use my mitre and it just didn't work. So I got the big guns out today now I have four lovely, all the same size, all nice and square legs for the shelf. And it's freezing, so let's just crack on. I'm having one of those days. <laughs> Nothing's going right. So the shelf that I was making to stand the fridge on wasn't working and I can't cut square and Darren's at work so I've given up on the first attempt I'm what I want is storage under the fridge space take three okay so my first attempt at making the shelf for the fridge just wasn't working and it looked rubbish and I hated it so it's one of those days where everything's going wrong. So what I'm going to do is start again. <laughs> um, what I really want is some storage space under the fridge shelf, hence it being high, but also because the fridge is quite small, if it's down on ground level then we're going to have to bend down all the time to get into it so that's why I wanted it raised up as well so two birds one stone let's try again okay so this is my storage unit that I want to have hidden away under the fridge with the fridge on top of a shelf going across there so I've got my legs which is giving me the right height now I need to cut a new top that well no I'm not gonna lie let me I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna measure it out and I'm gonna draw it out and then at the weekend when Darren's not working, he can saw it because he can saw straight. And then we won't waste any more wood and my temperament might improve. Let's give it a go. New piece of wood. So I've got my depth, marked it, then remembered I had to film. Now I need 43 centimetres width. Oh, I have marked it. Yes, there's my marks. Okay. So, oh, darn. Rubbish filming. I'm giving up. Good morning. 
So after yesterday's very frustrating day where I almost gave up with the um, shelf for the fridge I decided just to put the camera away and just crack on um, and when Darren came home he cut out the piece that I'd measured and marked so I'll show you what I did here we go I'll get you a little closer I just went with a much more simple design so the four legs just set back a bit so we don't kick them and the fridge sitting on top and space for storage underneath and it tucks in really nicely here next to the fridge so my jobs today um, I'll take the fridge off I'm going to fill in the little screw holes with some um, wood filler and when that's dry this afternoon I will rub it down and paint it and then I'll show you how because I'm sure people are going but that's going to fall off when you're driving along and yes it would but what I have just had arrived in the post is some um, webbing this is really strong it's the kind of stuff that you use for upholstery so it's upholstery webbing and some super strong velcro love the stuff hate the stuff but it really does work and then what i'm going to do <clears throat> is have the webbing come all the way down under the table between the legs between the legs up the other side and then the velcro will fasten across the top here and that will stop any forwards backwards motion when the bus is moving but also to stop any sort of other motion come in side to side um, I'm going to get a little um, like a little uh, quarter turn a little thing to, to stick on the front so that the, the legs are then trapped in and <clears throat> the webbing that I put down here I'll use a couple of washers to screw in and that will stop the webbing sliding because obviously everything's all um, slippy and slidey so that should stop that so that's my job for now what we also got done yesterday or last night was this we leveled off all of the kitchen units and screwed them together and then we placed screwed in um, a little board here at the back because even when the worktop is sitting across here there would still be a gap down here down where the uh, windowsill ends because of the, the gap at the back of the work units so we've put that on so if anything falls off the work surface it's just literally going to fall into this gap here and we can go and we can grab it there will be um, a splash splashback splashback that's the right word um, across here because the hob is likely to sit in this section here what we also got done and I'm super delighted about is doo, 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 we've got the first of our blinds up so there we go they were so easy to put up we've just done the two one over the kitchen area before we screw the kitchen area in and the one at the front these are IKEA blinds and they have 
like a hexagon shape here so it's supposed to help with thermal but then all thermal is is just trapped air so what we need to do is make um, some kind of little runner that will help it to stay in line with the sides of the bus because obviously the sides of the bus slope outwards if you're coming from the top of the window down um, and not all of the blinds came in exactly the right size and these ones can't be cut down so this that one this is the longest one and there is a fair gap there between the end of the blind and the post between the two windows hence having the splashback here so the splashback will do two jobs it will hold this and cover the gap here just literally because that was the biggest blind we could get just shows how big the windows are in the van so we have them for all five windows this one needs to be done this one and then this one but only the front two actually fit with the correct size I won't show you how we put the blinds up because they were dead easy and there's loads and loads of videos up on YouTube or just on the IKEA website um, just dead simple so and they are super super great I love them <laughs>